America is in the midst of an epidemic. Heroin has recently become a major problem in our country. Between 2011 and 2015, there has been a 433% increase in deaths resulting from heroin, according to statistics from the National Institute of Drug Abuse. The issue has taken a toll on our communities, our schools, our country as a whole, and personally. Um, a few months ago, I went to a wake for one of my childhood friends, and um, she had overdosed on heroin, and she had two kids. And even like two years ago, I had a friend um, who I spent a lot of time with. Uh, I hung out with all the high schoolers who lived on my street, and he was friends with them. And I hadn't seen him since I was like 10. And then uh, about two years ago, I ran into him at his uh, sister's surprise birthday party unknowingly. And it was the first time I'd seen him since like I was 10. And I found out like a few months later that he overdosed and died, and he also had a baby. And you know, it's just like one of those things that you wish could be different. A local New York News Network correspondent, Trishna Begum, released a News 10 special report on heroin in Rensselaer County in 2015. Authorities found a 600% increase in seized heroin between 2014 and 2015 in that county alone. With this ever-growing epidemic, what possible direction can we turn to save our society from this scourge? A not-so-recent method of counteracting this predicament might have the answer. We spoke to Dr. Alan Scott of Psychology about the direction this epidemic is heading. The problem with addiction in America is that our view of drugs and addiction is warped. The popular view of drugs in this country is that when there are no drugs, there will be no problems. But this attempt at drug suppression, stemming with the war on drugs, not only fails, but makes everything worse. Basic laws of economics state that if you take away the supply of a product without first reducing the demand, the price goes up. And this is especially with drugs, because people will pay any amount for drugs. The result in this is pressure to commit crime in order to obtain illicit drugs. Prohibition of a substance also creates a market for groups such as the Mexican cartel to fill, a war that has, according to a PBS record, killed more civilians than the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq combined since 2007, is funded by illegal substances sold in the U.S. Prohibition incites crime, increases the price and potency of drugs, and has led to mass incarceration of nonviolent drug users in the U.S. The same thing happened in the 1920s with the prohibition of alcohol. So what other routes could we take? Heroin assisted treatment. In the 1980s, Switzerland experienced an epidemic much like the one we see in America today. But in response to this epidemic, they took a different direction. Heroin assisted treatment is a program based on harm reduction rather than criminal prosecution. Addicts who complied to certain criteria were given maintenance doses of clinically tested pure diamorphine or heroin. People were allowed private injection rooms and assigned social workers who helped them find housing and jobs so they focused on financing their own lives and not their addiction. What they saw in the results was more than favorable. Several documents approved by the Swiss Federal Office of Public Health state that drug-related crime dropped by 90%. HIV and AIDS transmission rates greatly declined. Heroin overdoses in the community dropped by 50%. 75% of participants moved on from their addiction. No one in the program ever died or overdosed, and they even see a lower new user rate. And for people concerned about the cost of this treatment, Switzerland claims they saw a $36 a day per patient saving due to the lack of court, health, and imprisonment fines and fees caused by patients who previously committed crimes. While this program established a way for addicts to receive treatment focused on their physical addiction, there is still a matter of the mental addiction. This is where the current warped view of addiction in the U.S. makes the problem worse. In the late 1970s, Dr. Bruce Alexander saw an experiment that consisted of putting a rat in a cage and giving him a choice to drink from the normal water and heroin-laced water. Every time this test was run, the rat would drink from heroin-laced water until it died. But Dr. Alexander had noticed the rat was all alone in the cage so he built Rat Park. This is a place for rats to run around, play, and be with a bunch of other rats. They were also given the option of the heroin-laced water or regular water. When the test was run, the rats rarely drank the heroin-laced water and none of them ever died. On the mental addiction side, it's a matter of the person's cage. When we're alone and beaten down by life or disconnected, we resort to many different kinds of addictions to fill that gap, not just drugs. It can be television, your phone, pornography, video games, gambling, or drugs. But when we're surrounded by loved ones and we feel connected, we're happy and healthy. The point is that we need to sort of revise our view of addiction as a country because addiction isn't caused by heroin as much as it's caused by isolation and disconnection. We need to stop outcasting these people suffering from addiction, in turn making it worse. And we need to focus on the path of harm reduction, such as heroin-assisted treatment, free these people from their mental cage, and not put them into a physical one.